So let's light paint a bit here. Let's see if, if it would be cool to have one here and then maybe one on the back here as well. And you get these very, very nice lines and everything is updated on the fly inside Blender. So welcome back to the channel. Today we'll go over how to light this weird little hurricane using Blender and HDLI Studio. We'll be doing everything from scratch, so I'll teach you all my techniques that I use to create images like these. Before doing this tutorial, I expect that you have downloaded and installed HDL Light Studio along with the add-on for Blender. You can grab a free trial online to get started. And be sure to stick around until the end of the video to figure out how you can get 10% off this tool. But hey, we've got lots to cover, so let's just jump right into it. So the first thing we have to figure out is our camera angle. Because when we decide on a camera angle, we cannot change it anymore. If we do change it, then all the reflections will also change and our lighting will be broken. So find a camera angle and stick to it. Secondly, we have to set up the materials for the car. And if you need a good car paint, then you can check out this video by Demian Matthew, where he goes over the important things when creating a car paint. We can add animation if we want to. So for this one, I added just some very basic animation here just to show that it's possible. However, if you are going to do animation, you need to pick a keyframe. Or, I mean, one frame in the animation, which will be the one you'll use to set the lighting. So now we're all ready. Let's go ahead and launch HDR Light Studio. You do this inside Blender by clicking the Start button. You have to install the HDR Light Studio first, of course. So now we're inside HDR Light Studio. I'll just clean out the old layers I have in here before we go back to Blender and import our model so we can see it inside HDR Light Studio. So to import our model, what we'll do is just click export scene geometry here. And our model appears inside HDR Light Studio. Let's just rearrange the workspace a little bit because it is a bit crowded. Now we would like to make this render view a bit wider. Up here we can see if we start to add lights. Let's drag in this, this light here. We can actually place it inside this view. So it's a very good view. It's a very good window to use. But let's make it a bit bigger by bumping this up to under render view settings we can bump this up and you can also zoom into the car because we only want to see the car we don't care about the rest however i would like to keep this on one screen so what i think we will do is to actually create a new window from blender and put it on top here now this rendered view will actually show the lighting from hg light studio so to start out let's just play a bit around and throw in some lights and see what happens so you have this layer stack up here, which is kind of like Photoshop, where you can just drop in lights wherever you want. You can also drop them in onto the car. And you can see if you use this picker tool, you can actually light paint with these layers. So let's light paint a bit here. Let's see if, if it would be cool to have one here and then maybe one on the back here as well. And you get these very, very nice lines and everything is updated on the fly inside Blender. I kind of feel like um, I'm not digging this default background. So you can click this solo to see what one thing is one layer is doing. Let me move out this view a little bit and move this one up. Let's see if this makes it better. Because I would really like to get this line of the car, this horizon line. Actually, I think I should just explain what a horizon line is. If we delete everything and we add in just a white background, a flat white background, and we bump this up like crazy you'll be able to see there is there's a line going across the car here and that's essentially the horizon line. That is where we're starting to reflect the floor instead of the sky. And usually making a contrast on this line so the part below is darker and the part above is brighter will make the render look sweet. And another thing we have to take into consideration is that our floor right now is black. If we were to make the floor white, we would not really get this horizon line. So it depends on what kind of render you want to do. For this one, it's a really moody, black, dark, contrasty look, and that's the look I also like to go for. So to start out, I'll add a dark black background. This is just to make sure that our alpha is always solid. You can run into issues if you don't do this, so I just figured that this is a good way to, to start out. Next thing we want to do is to add an environment background. So even though we put in lights and we can put them very specific, I feel like it's always a good idea to have an environment in the background because environments just look so much more realistic than lights that you place by hand. I'll just load in this HDR map right here. You can find it, links in the description. So I don't want this to overblow everything and I want it to just be very, very subtle. 
So first of all, let's make it more contrasty by pulling down the gamma. This will make the highlights more bright and the darker parts darker. And also let's pull down the brightness to something like three. Okay, now we have just very subtle hints. And this almost works like a, um, like a light instead of an environment. Now we can try to see if we can get some nice reflections on the car. Let's actually try to move it in here, move it up so it is above the car. See if we can get something that we like here. Something that defines the car and give these, maybe these window reflections. You can see these reflections are much nicer than any other reflections that we will usually get. I think this could be cool. Maybe it would actually be, maybe it would actually be nice to have an extra one of these, put it somewhere else. change it to add this could be pretty cool so I changed this to add because if it's over then it will overlay so it will cover the other one if it adds then it's just adding on top so you get more of these windows this makes it look like it has some kind of environment around it so that is our environment let's try to add a bulb now and I usually use these this is not something I'm super good at, but I try to use these to define the gradients of the car. So for instance, up here, I want to have a nice gradient going across here. I don't want it to be like a very bright highlight line. I don't want it to be a reflection, but more like just a, just a gradient. Actually, I think this could look really cool. Maybe we can even bump it up a bit to get a bit more call on the car. So this is very different from what you sometimes will see on cars, which are these lines, actual hot lines on the car. If you were to cut this one in half, you can see what I kind of mean. You know this, we actually get these lines. Instead of the lines right now, we're just focusing on the gradients of the car and not having these lines in there. So let's remove this light and go back to just the round light. Okay, that is great. So let's call this for top door because it is, well, because it is the area above the door. I don't know what I was thinking about when recording this. For now, let's just duplicate it and let's go on. So what you want to do with these lights is to highlight certain features and parts of the car. And you want to try to make a nice lighting gradient on those parts. So for instance here, I'm trying to get a gradient on this small flap in the front of the car because I really like to exaggerate that. Okay, so now we can't really hit this because we also get a reflection here. So let's try to turn this into an area light and I'll show you how to use area lights. And okay, now it's gonna be a bit cramped, but we will take the smart dolly slider and pull it down. What you will see happening when we do that is that there's actually a light in here in the actual blender scene, which goes back and forth. This means that the size of the reflection will stay the same, but we can focus the light so it's not hitting other parts of the car. If we convert this back to a non area light, you can see how it affects this part here. And if we convert it back to an area light, you can see how it's very localized. So it only hits this part here. Now let's circle back and take a look at everything we got this far and see how we can proceed from here. So this far, I think we're looking pretty good. Next thing we need to do is to actually light up the door a bit more because right now the door is completely black. So let's try doing that by adding an area lamp. So first of all, we need a gradient. It needs to be somewhere around here on the door. Let's just solo this light so we can see what's happening here. So we need this light to be pretty big. We need it to be pretty wide. So it's encapsulating the car. Let's try to moving it, moving it down. Let's just play around until we find something that we that we think can work. So let's turn this into an area lamp because if it is an, an area light, then it's easy to control and you sometimes get nicer colors on it. And I find that these lights that you want to make reflections, these sharp reflections are better when you use them as area lights. So here I'm just using the smart dolly again to get the light to be a bit closer to the car. Sometimes you will have this problem where the light is actually in front of the camera. If you have that problem, just go into HDLI Studio and uncheck camera visibility. If you do this in Blender, you'll experience problems, so be sure to do it in HDLI Studio. So let's get this one nice and close. 
something like this. And we can start to see that we get this, this line. So let's bump this one up to around 200, 200 something. So we get more light on there. And we can play around with the logarithmic fall off, which will just give us a, a quicker fall off, more of a thin line. You can also go in and adjust the, the curve here. You can see the gradient of here, how it's gonna how it's gonna be in the car. And you can also see it here, but the best thing is to look at it inside Blender because that's the final. That's how it's gonna look when it's done. I kind of want to see what happens if I just bump up this width. You can see that you get a little bit of detail here and here. Let's try now to combine this with our other lights and see how it all works together. So obviously this light, this light down here is too bright. Right now we are we're having the same color up here and the same color down here. That's not a good idea. Usually you try to, to have two different colors. Uh, so one part is brighter than the other. So let's try to pull this one a bit up. Or maybe even dial down the intensity of it. We can also try rotating it to see if that will give us the result we're looking for. Let's just solo it again, because if we don't solo, then we don't know what's happening. Because I really liked this highlight here. So it actually seems like if we have the rotation at 20, 20, we have a nicer lighting than if we have it at zero. So I would just go for this, try to put it somewhere around there and then see if that works better for us. One thing I would like to do now is to start adding in details. So the first thing we would do is to add a gradient on the windscreen, because you usually see this kind of gradient on cars. And it could actually be cool to try to play around with some colors now to make the background be another color. So let's duplicate this area light and let's click here to try to get this reflection going. So how these reflections usually work is that they are gradients going from the side of the car and then fading out into the middle of the car. So we gotta swap this one. So what we need to do is just pull up this side and pull down this side. You can play around with the gradient here. So right now you can see we have a little bit of the effect, but I would like to, it to be a bit stronger. We also have this nice line up here and this nice line here and it's also defining the front of the car very well. For now, it might be a bit too strong still. And you can see how this reflection actually becomes a white because it's picking up the, the clear coat and none of the metallic in the car paint. All these other reflections, they get kind of yellow and this nice they get this nice glow because they're picking up the, the metallic in the paint. And this is just reflecting the clear coat almost. This is something I've noticed, and I'm not sure if it's physically correct or if it's just a limitation of maybe my my material or whatever. But I usually find that that it looks like this. One thing that could also be really cool is to get this this line here. But let's see if we can get it to work or if it will if it will mess up everything. So if we want to color this, we can go to the color ramp and pick color here, and here we can pick a color for our light. Let's try something something really nice and blue and cool. This could work, maybe even more actually. Seating context with context with the other lights. Actually we would like this one to be the same color, so let's just pull blue there. So I am not quite fond of the way this works. Maybe it's because it just needs to be less. Or maybe it's because it's too blue or something like that. Let's try to pull down the value a bit more. Let's see if that will give us a better result. Maybe it actually needs to be opposite. So it's more blue towards the center, less blue towards the edge. Okay, so from here on out, I actually just ended up tweaking the light a lot and making it worse and worse every single time I touched it. But I guess that's how CG is sometimes. But let's not talk more about that light, let's move on to the next one. So I'm kind of missing some reflections on the hood of the car, along with the roof of the car. So what I will do is to duplicate the side light, the side area light, called the top, and then use the light paint to put it on the top of the car. Now I just need to tweak it. So the way we'll do this is to make a white line and make it fall off 
over the top of the car. And I decided to put it here at the, at the edge of the car. So it kind of added these reflections up here, but also added a bit of a gradient on the windscreen. I kind of feel like we need some more reflections on the car. So let's go ahead and duplicate our environment map and just try to play around with some settings and see if we can get some more interesting reflections going. I will move it to the top like last time and then just try to, to solo it and move it around until I find some, some nice reflections that I would like to keep on the car. Let's also just add another spot lamp to highlight these flaps on the back of the car. You can see how that just adds a bit detail in there. Let's do the same thing for this part down here to also highlight that. So awesome. I think we got ourselves some pretty decent car lighting here. But before we go ahead and close HGL Light Studio, we need to render or bake our texture so you can use them in Blender. Because right now we're actually running a proxy version of this HGI map. And if, if, if you go into preferences, you can see what resolution you're running right now. Actually, we are running a super low resolution. So if you need more detail, if these reflection does not look crisp enough in your preview, then you can bump up this proxy map size. And if your area lights does not look crisp enough, you can bump up this area light size. I would suggest that you keep these relatively low because then it will be very quick when you're going back and forth. So this HGI map looks like a mess, but as long as it looks good on the car, who cares, right? So now what we gotta do is to press this HGR button and that will launch our production render of the HGRI. So it already got all the correct settings, Blender, Blender, and let's just go with 5,000 times 2,500 and let's just make this actually to 48. The format HR is perfect linear. Let's just put this somewhere and click render. So the rendering will take a couple of minutes depending on your system. But I found it's the perfect time to go grab a cup of coffee. Just like the good old times before GPU rendering. So the export finished and we can load this up inside Blender. And you can see a mess of lines here and planes and everything. But yeah, let's just make these display this wire. Okay, so now the one last thing we need to do before we can actually call this a day and render our shot is to close HGLI Studio. And you might think that clicking the X is the right thing to do, but it's actually not. And I've had issues if I didn't do this the correct way. What you have to do is press stop here. So it will stop HGLI Studio and it will give you the correct textures in, in Blender. And if you go into the shader editor in the world, you can see how this links to the HGI that we just rendered out and saved in this folder. So let's see how this looks. And this looks exactly like we wanted it to. We should actually even be able to see that now the reflections are even sharper than before. We have all these nice details thanks to HGLI Studio. As I mentioned before, one last thing I want to do is just add some lights inside Blender. So what I tend to do is to add some area lights for the rims. So for the first one, I'll just place it here at a 45 degree angle, turn it into a rectangle and then stretch it a bit. Then rotate it like this. Let's just try to grab the wheel here, the reel, the reel here, and bump this up. And with the add-on gaffer, I will just, just isolate this light. So we can see what this light does by itself. And let's try to put this somewhere where it's not interfering too much with the, with the, with the car, but mainly the wheel. You get this really nice edge on the, on the rim. Let's rotate this around the pivot and put it up here as well. So you get this stuff which is kind of weird and falls wrong and but who cares. If you want more light, you can rotate them like this. And if you want less, you can rotate them like this. What is really cool about this is that you get the, the light on the edges. So it's not evenly lit and you have this very directional light from the front of the car. So actually what I do is just copy this to the front like that like so and this looks pretty decent i think i 
actually let's rotate it out a little bit more like this okay great so let's just add in all the other lights and compare with and without the blender lights without and with so it just makes the the wheels pop a little bit and you can do this with other things as well but try to do as much as you can inside hgl light studio because well it's nice software and there you go we're actually ready to render one last thing i would like to show is the is how i do my color management for a high contrast render like this i usually just put it to very high contrast or high contrast that gives you that very punchy look which just looks sweet when you're rendering you can balance everything with the gamma and the exposure but try not to go too crazy with the gamma the gamma should be around one and the exposure is the one that you should pull so you should try to fix it with the exposure but if you feel like ah, it would be a bit better if i can just tweak the gamma a little bit then well go ahead tweak it i won't tell anybody but the thing is in a real life camera you will be tweaking the exposure all the time but you cannot tweak the gamma the gamma is kind of set in stone so that's why it's bad to change it too much so that about wraps up this tutorial. I hope you found it useful and you learned something from it. So as I mentioned in the beginning, the HDL Live Studio guys actually gave us a 10% promo code. This is not an affiliate link or anything like that. And this entire video is my complete own opinion and experience with this software. But I gotta say, this tool is so valuable for car lighting because it gives you all the freedom to just explore and be creative. Also, if you like this video, please like it and share it. And if you want to see more, feel free to subscribe and follow me on Instagram, where I'm posting small, short, quick tips and also some projects that I'm working on. But hey guys, stay happy and see you in the next one.